Hi, it's Kirsty from Lloyd Sewing and in this video we are going to have a look at the different kinds of walking feet that are available for the machine and also introduce to you the Dynamic Walking Foot which is a recent accessory that has been released from Brother. Um, now a, a walking foot is necessary when you are working with some awkward fabrics like slippery fabrics, slidey fabrics, so if you do any dressmaking with silks and satins, uh, that the walking foot can be really helpful with those kinds of fabrics, but it's also used a lot with quilting, which a lot of you will know. So if you have multiple layers of fabric, so here we've got a piece of cotton fabric, then a piece of wadding, and then another piece of cotton fabric on the back. And what can happen when you're feeding this through the machine is the feed dogs underneath are pulling that fabric through, but if you've got a normal foot on top, it starts to push it. And you, what you end up with is the fabric can bunch up and it becomes unaligned. So what a walking foot does is, as well as having your feed dogs on the machine underneath pulling the fabric through, the walking foot has feed dogs on top that also pulls the fabric through from the top. So if you have your layers of fabric like this, and we've got the feed dogs underneath and the foot on the top, the feed dogs are pulling the fabric through underneath, but the walking foot pulls it through at the same time on top. So you don't end up with the fabrics pulling against each other they're both being fed through evenly. Now the standard walking feet that many of you will be aware of are the standard walking foot here which has a closed toe on it and then there's also the open toe walking foot which is a lot more popular and this is what the open toe walking foot looks like. So you can see what they mean by open toe is this area here is an open area okay so that allows you to see the stitches that you're doing and see the needle position a little bit more clearly and then you also get the markings on there for different allowances for those of you who have the larger machines there's also the dual feed foot available and we have done a full video explaining how the dual feed foot works. This is a motorised version of the walking foot so instead of just being a mechanical feed dog it has a motorised rubber belt instead. So go check out our other video if you'd like to see more on the dual feed foot. But what I'd like to focus on in this video is the dynamic walking foot set. So it's a newer accessory. You can see that the standard walking foot, we've already said you've got the option for the open toe or the standard version, but you can't take those feet off. They're not adjustable. The dynamic walking foot is this one here. The first difference you can see is it's made of metal rather than plastic. It's a lot sturdier and we've had a few customers who have phoned us up in the, fo in the past and uh, have said they've managed to break these. We don't know how but they've managed it. Um, this metal one is a lot more durable. Okay, It's also a lot quieter. You can hear if I just give that a little bit of a shake. The standard walking feet are quite noisy when you're using them. Now that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with them. They're just a little bit rattly. This one is a lot smoother. I've been using it over the past couple of days and it's so much smoother when you're using it. But what I love about it is that it has interchangeable feet. So we have a standard foot and we also have an open toe foot and these just clip on. And it comes with both. So if you want to use a standard one, you clip that one on. And if you want to use the open toe one, we clip that one on instead. So rather than having to have two separate walking feet with different kinds of areas here, you just buy the one foot and it's got both of them and they're interchangeable. It also comes with a little screwdriver as well. Um, I mean, all the machines do come with a screwdriver when you first get them, but these things go walk about. So you get an additional one there to be able to attach the foot onto the machine. And you also get a full set of instructions as well. But I'm gonna go through how to actually put it onto the machine now and how you can use it. So here we have a layer of cotton fabric, a layer of wadding, and another layer of fabric and this is what we're going to use to show you how the new dynamic walking foot works. However, I do want to point out that this is the most recent thing I have made using the dynamic walking foot and it wasn't the easiest 
kind of, you know, the easiest project with the easiest fabrics to do. Um, so it's a little project bag and on the back here we have a glitter vinyl fabric and then on the front you can see what we've got inside here is a glitter, a glitter cotton fabric and we've got a layer of wadding in between there which gives it that nice puffy quilted effect. And then we've got a layer of clear vinyl on the top. At this point down here um, we have uh, two layers of the glittery fabric and I use the dynamic walking foot to make this project because these feet have a non-stick coating on them. So for the quilting it was ideal to use a walking foot to quilt these layers because it stopped the fabric from shifting but using the standard walking foot the foot would have actually stuck against that fabric because it's a vinyl fabric. So because these have a non-stick coating on them it just glided straight over the vinyl both on the front and the back no matter which side I was sewing from. So you can see the standard walking foot doesn't have a non-stick coating. Whereas both of the feet that come with the dynamic walking foot have this matte finish to them and that means that they have the non-stick coating on them. So let's see how we can attach this foot onto the machine. So the first thing you need to do is turn the machine off because what you don't want to run the risk of is setting it going and the needle coming down and you end up injuring yourself. So we turn the machine off and then I'm going to use the little black screwdriver that comes with the dynamic walking foot to remove our presser foot here. So we can take our presser foot off by pressing the button at the back of your presser foot holder and then I'm going to use a screwdriver to undo that screw on the shank there and take the presser foot holder off. Now this machine is a low shank machine. For those of you who have a high shank machine, what you would now need to do is put the shank adapter onto the machine and that lengthens the shank to make it suitable for using with the dynamic walking foot. All of the machines that are a high shank machine come with the shank adapter and within the instructions that come with the dynamic walking foot, it does tell you how to actually attach that onto the machine. Once you've got that on the machine, you then just attach the walking foot in the same way. So what we want to do is this lever here, you can see if I lift this up and down, that is what actually makes these top feed dogs move up and down to pull the, fa the fabric through. Now to make that go up and down, this lever needs to go across our needle bar here. So as the needle comes up and down, this lever goes up and down and that makes these feed dogs go up and down as well. So from the back of the machine we want to bring this foot forward and make sure that you just lift this lever up so that the prongs go on either side of the needle bar here. So it's going over it. And that goes onto the shank. Now the shank is, has got a flat side to it on the left hand side here so that foot can only go on in one position and then as we start to tighten this up, sorry I'll move my arm out of the way in a moment, so we start to tighten that up and then I'm going to get the screwdriver and just finish off tightening that screw and you can see it starts to straighten up as you tighten the screw so then it can't move from a different position because it's got this flat side here okay so I've tightened that up and the next thing we want to do is decide which foot we're going to use so I'm going to start with the uh, closed toe one in the instructions they actually call these soles which makes sense in a way if this is your foot this is the sole on the shoe um, but you, so you decide which one of those you want to use and then you just want to slide that underneath and just clip that onto the foot. If you find it easier to put that on before attaching the walking foot onto the machine, that's no problem, just do it before instead, okay? So we can now turn the machine back on and within your instructions here, they come in all different languages and you get 
pictures and then info to go with those and it tells you everything you need to do so it tells you what all the parts are it tells you what stitches are suitable for so it says to use the standard foot with either a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch and you use the open toe version with satin stitches and other decorative stitches but only up to a 7 mil width so if your machine has the capabilities to do multi-directional stitching and do the extra wide decorative stitches you can't use those with a walking foot the reason for that is you've got the feed dogs here pulling the fabric forward and your feed dogs underneath pulling it forwards as well. So you can go forwards and backwards, but if you try to do, use any of these multi-directional stitches where the fabric wants to go side to side as well as backwards and forwards, it's going to fight against the feed dogs here. So those stitches are not suitable for using with this foot. It shows you how to attach it in the same way that I've just done now and shows you how to attach the feet on and off as well. Okay, you also get the info for the markings on the open toe version, but I'll go through them in more detail with you in a short while. So for now, let's just do a straight stitch with the foot. So I'm going to set my needle position to the centre. So on this machine, it's stitch number three. So my needle position is at 3.5. My stitch length is at 2.5, which is a standard stitch length. And if you feel that the foot's a little bit low and you need to raise that up just to feed your fabric under, remember, wherever your lever is on the machine, whether it's at the back or on the inside, you can raise that foot higher in order to feed your fabric underneath, okay? So then we'll pop the foot down. I'll just bring the speed down a little bit so we don't go racing off. Press the start button. And you can see what that foot is doing. So... As the needle goes up and down, because we've got that lever over the needle bar, that then makes these feed dogs go up and down on the top as well. So as well as our feed dogs underneath the fabric pulling that bottom layer through, we have a set of feed dogs on the top here pulling our top layer of fabric through. Now with layers of quilting fabric like this, it works perfectly, but you can also imagine how that will work um, with you know silky satiny fabrics it's fabrics that slide around alone around a lot because your bottom layer of fabrics are, are being fed through evenly but your top layer has the tendency to slide about whereas with this foot both layers are going to be clamped together and pulled at the same time so it's working in a clamping motion and pulling them both through rather than having your fabric in the middle and your feed dogs underneath are just pulling the uh, the bottom layer through instead Just going to turn around and we'll go back up the other side because those of you who have one of the standard walking feet I hope that you can tell from this video how quiet this uh, new dynamic version is okay so we can see the fabric is lovely and neat on the top but then also underneath it's nice and smooth there as well. So we've just seen the dynamic walking foot with the standard foot attachment here, so the closed toe one that I would call it. Um, we've just seen that one working and in the instructions it recommends that you can use this foot for a straight stitch like we did or you can also use it for a zigzag stitch as well. Now what I want to show you is the open toe version. You can see that we've got some markings on this foot. Now, if you wanted to use um, a straight, you know, do a straight stitch with this foot, if you have the needle position in the centre, you have markings on here to show you what a quarter inch stitch allowance is. Okay, so where the needle position will drop down here, this mark here would be a quarter of an inch away from the edge of your fabric. So say we were coming down here. When the edge of your fabric gets to that point, it means that the needle position here is a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So then if you need to raise the foot and pivot it round, you know that you're in the correct position. The other marking that you've got, and it shows you this in the manual, uh, is the edge here, if you have your needle position in the centre, this inner edge 
is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So then when you've come down here and then we've pivoted round, if your fabric is on this inner edge, that is a quarter of an inch from where the needle will be in a centre position, okay? So you can use this foot for doing a quarter inch seam allowance, so you don't need to worry about using your quarter inch foot either. So it means that you can use this dynamic walking foot a lot of the time for a lot of your projects. The other thing it says you can use this open toe version for is decorative stitches as long as they're no wider than 7mm. It does show some examples uh, in the little instruction manual that it comes with um, and I'll show you how it works with them now. But one thing that we want to point out is the standard walking foot that you can get. The manuals that comes with them, it only recommends that you use them with a straight or a zigzag stitch. They're not entirely suitable for doing the decorative stitches with them okay so anything that's got a forward and reverse feed in its stitch style in the stitch pattern it doesn't recommend that you use those stitches with the standard walking foot but with the dynamic walking foot as long as you put this open toe version on you're okay to use those stitches so to attach this onto the machine i need to remove this foot so i just unclip that one and I'm just going to change over to this one instead. So I'm just raising up the foot a little bit higher there, just to get that underneath. And then we just clip that on in its place, okay? Really easy to change the feet over. Now the first stitch I'm going to show you, using the open toe version, is stitch number 52 on the machine here. So this is called, I well, I call it my wiggly waggly wavy stitch, um, but the official term for it I think is the serpentine stitch, okay? So it's stitch number 52. So I'll just select that stitch. And I love using this stitch for quilting because when you do parallel line quilting like this, you need to make sure that all of your lines are perfectly equal. When you use this serpentine stitch, or my wiggly waggly stitch, it doesn't matter if you go a little bit off. If you go a little bit closer to one than the other, it doesn't matter. As long as you go in the general same direction for each line that you do, it works really well. So it takes out that having to measure everything precisely. And I think it gives a really nice effect as well. I especially love it, love it with this glitter vinyl. It looks like uh, the sand with the, uh, you know, after the tide's gone out and, uh, it's you know, the ripple effects that you get on the sand. So that's what this reminds me of. And I, I just think it's a really nice stitch to use. I've done them when I've done them closer together and further apart as well. But the one thing I do is I just lengthen the stitch. So the standard setting for it is only one mil. And I usually increase it up to 2.5, but more often than not, I increase it to a three mil stitch. Okay. So we'll just get our fabric underneath the foot here. And pop the foot down, press the start button, and slow that down a bit so we can see what it's doing. So you can see the needle is moving in a wave position. And again, because we've got the walking foot on, it's feeding the top layer of the fabric through as well as the bottom layer. So I'm not having to keep stopping, smoothing the fabric out, it just does it automatically as it's sewing. And then just for reference for yourself, if you want to know what I do for then lining it up for the next one, is I look at the apex of the curve here as it's coming out on the right hand side. I pop my foot underneath and I might line it up with the outer edge of the left hand side of the foot there. And I just keep that as a guide. So then when I do the next one, as long as that apex of the curve is a similar distance away from the edge of the foot each time I do it, then the quilting works really well. But if you go a little bit off, because we've got a wavy stitch, you can't tell, you can't notice. So that's my little quilting cheats trick for you. If you want to quilt all your layers of fabric together and you don't like doing free motion work or anything like that and you feel afraid to do straight line quilting, go with the wiggly waggly stitch instead.
Now let's have a look at a stitch that's got a forward and reverse feed on it. So one of the ones it recommends in the book is stitch number 66 on this machine here. Okay. Now not all machines will have these stitches, but if they do, you can use them. So I'm in this section and I'm going to cancel out that selection and then type in number 66 and change to that stitch. Okay. So you can see what this stitch is doing is as well as feeding forwards, it's also feeding backwards. And this is the maximum speed that I would go at when using the walking foot. Anything between a low to medium speed is okay. If you go any higher than that, it, you know, it could cause you some issues. See, we've got a lovely stitch there and the fabric has been fed through really nicely on both the top and the bottom there as well. I hope you've enjoyed our Lloyd sewing video about the dynamic walking foot and the other walking feet that are available as well. Now this foot is compatible with I think all of the current uh, Brother models. Um, if you are unsure about whether or not it will fit on your machine, please don't hesitate to drop us an email or give us a call. Thank you for watching.